Mr. Speaker, there's been a lot talked about here about documents that the Attorney General couldn't give us. These documents, documents under seal, would be an example of documents that we should not see except in camera. And we've taken great care to ensure that no one outside members of Congress and key staff have ever looked at them. But I've looked at them, and what I know is that these documents, read by any person of ordinary learning, make it very clear that these wiretap applications read, by, read and signed by individuals in the Department of Justice in Washington, you read them, you knew they were gun walking. People will tell you differently. I give you my word. You read this, you know they were letting guns go to Mexico. They knew who the buyers were, who the intermediaries were, who the recipients were, and most importantly, where they ended up. And there were reports in here as part of evidence given to judges in order to get wiretaps. There were evidence that they knew that, in fact, weapons had already ended up in Mexico. That's before Brian Terry was killed. That's where Fast and Furious could have been stopped. That's where people could have been warned. In fact, that's why, that's why, at a time in which ATF agents in Mexico City, if they punched in the serial number of a weapon found there, they got an erroneous, an error. They did not get meaningful information because that was being blocked, not by ATF per se, but by the Department of Justice under the auspices of the U.S. Attorney and his bosses. Now, you're going to hear that this began under President Bush, Attorney General McKenzie. I'm going to tell you that's just false. What happened in previous administrations with some of the same local ATF agents was they exercised extremely bad judgment. They did things and pushed on programs that I believe were poorly conceived and poorly manned, and as a result, they lost track of weapons repeatedly. That happened, and it was wrong. The U.S. Attorney at the time even declined prosecutions because of failed techniques. All of these were shut down during the Bush administration. Bush, President Bush can take no credit for it. He didn't know it. As far as I know, the Attorney General didn't know. And anyone who saw the record of that should say this was wrong-minded. But during this administration, during the time in which the Attorney General and his key lieutenants, including Lanny Brewer, were in charge. They reopened the prosecutions from, an org from a uh, failed program called Wide Receiver, and they opened Fast and Furious. Now, I'm the second child in a family. I have an older brother, and I learned at a very young age, you, in fact, cannot, when you do something wrong, say, my brother Billy did it. It doesn't work that way. You're responsible for what you do wrong, whether it happened before your watch or not. This happened on the Attorney General's watch. But that's not why we're here today. We're here because when we asked legitimate questions about Brian Terry's murder, about, about Fast and Furious, we were lied to. We were lied to repeatedly and over a 10-month period. The fact is, that is what we're here for. The American people want to know that if you give false testimony to Congress, and the, speak, the, the, the minority leader talked about why is there such a hurry? Why was there 10 months delay? I was sworn in just a few days before this investigation began, and now we're nearing an election, and we don't want to have this during an election. We want to have resolution for the Terry family. The important thing is we know enough to know that we have people who have told us under penalty of criminal prosecution, they have told Congress and their employees certain documents exist, and we've asked for those documents, and we've been denied them. We can't bring Kenneth Melson back in in good faith and say, well, we've got to have him in front of our committee. If, in fact, there's documents he says exist, and they do, and they, they will not be given to us, we want to have those so we can ask the best questions. You've heard earlier that, in fact, we've denied somehow due process to the minority. My ranking member is very capable and has asked for minority days, in other words, hearings exclusively for him. He chose not to do it. When we were having the local ATF and other individuals 
in early on, all of whom worked for this government? He didn't even ask for any. It wasn't until we asked to have the Attorney General come in based on these false statements and, re and final retraction that he suddenly wanted a previous Attorney General who happened to say, no, I don't want to come. So on that particular day, we would have had to subpoena him to get him in. I have no objection to having the former Attorney General in. I believe that on his watch and his predecessor's watch and his predecessor's watch, and for a very long time, we have not done a good job of overseeing the actions of field agents when it comes to guns. But again, we're here today for the first time in over 200 years to deal with an Attorney General who has flat refused to give the information related to lies and a cover-up exclusively within his jurisdiction. Lies and a, and a cover-up exclusively in his jurisdiction. Time That's what we're voting on. I urge vote Time. on the contempt on behalf of the Terry family. Time.